Every once in a while, a bright idea comes along. An idea so simple, one wonders what took so long. Something elegant and attractive. A beacon in the night. The Shiny comes pretty well packed with all the parts wrapped in plastic and the fuselage bracketed in foam. No damage in shipping was noted. There are only three major parts to assemble. Das Handbuch hat sieben Seiten. Uh, wait, I mean... The manual has ten pages of black and white photos that outline the simple construction. The all wood shiny is covered with a semi-gloss iron-on film with a rather colorful print work. Aileron servos are pre-installed as is all the wiring for the lights. And there are a lot of lights everywhere. All you need to do is plug stuff in. Power connectors are pre-installed in the wings and tail. Did I mention there are lights everywhere? The speed controller is unlabeled, but web sources say it's rated for 40 amps. At the front is a 10 inch folding prop and two air cooling inlets. The Dean's type connector comes wired with a power tap for the lights. Oh look, more lights! Note that the on-off switch on the side is only for the lights. Assembly starts with extracting the power connector from the tail. With that done, temporarily install the horizontal stab and mark the line to remove the covering. Be careful not to cut through the wood. Connect the power connector before gluing anything, so as to check that the tail lights are functional. Once assured that photons are being emitted, glue on the tail with thick CA or epoxy. Next, install the control horns with the supplied hardware. Then position the hinges onto the tail. Because of the lights in the stab, I needed to trim the hinges a little bit shorter. If you need to enlarge the hinge slots in the stab like I did, be very careful not to damage the lights as they are very close to the hinge slots. Carefully slide in the elevator cross member. Some wax paper is used to keep the glue isolated. Slide in the hitch control surface, then glue in the place with thin CA. Now install the elevator control rod, and then cut the size. An easy connector holds it in place. All that's left to do is warp the lights and servos. One last light check for sanity, and then it's on to setting up the control surfaces. And that's when I noticed a couple of issues. First, the alarm horns were a little loose. Then I noticed that the elevator control had significant play. Further investigation showed that the hole in the servo horn was drilled too big. So I removed the connector, drilled out a new hole, then reinstalled it with a drop of thread lock. Ah, much better. 
Now let's go fly this thing. 